All right, so here we have an Omron E5CN, commonly used as the R2MT-500 on the steam engineering steam generators. Um, you can see the wiring configuration. Um, what we commonly use on these is terminal one and two, which on our electrical is the activator output for a water solenoid or a relay activating the same pulse water solenoid. Um, also, you'll see that there's terminal four and five. As you can see on the back here, I've connected my negative and positive, negative red, positive yellow into those terminals for temperature feedback. And the last um, two, or there's four more actually, uh, this number seven and eight, which um, is typically used as the alarm output in the event that it goes past our alarm set point. And number nine and 10, which is the power input, which I've got currently connected. Um, what we have here on the face um, is what we normally start up with, which is the process value PV and the set value SV. Um, to start programming this, you wanna push and hold this first button here. It starts flashing. Now it's uh, IN-T, so input type number five. We use type Ks on our systems most of the time. Please be careful to check the thermocouple type. It should be color-coded wire in the head of the thermocouple. If it's white and red, then it's a J. If it's yellow and red, then it's a K. Um, this is the, the uh, unit type. Uh, what it is is Celsius normally for Canadian units and Fahrenheit for uh, United States and Mexico. Um, the set limit high for Celsius is 130. Set limit low. On demonstration purposes, I've set this at zero, but normally it's set at 100 so that the operator doesn't flood the unit. Um, control type, this is a PID. Standard or heating control, it's gonna be standard in this type, not heating control. We don't want it to act like a thermostat. Uh, uh, this is the step is on, uh, pattern is off. Uh, control period is gonna be number 10. This is the length uh, for pulses that it will allow up to. And uh, this is the uh, object uh, object control, and uh, in this instance, we're going to be direct acting for a cooling mechanism. If you left this as, for instance, um, uh, R for reverse, then it would be a heating mechanism. We want it to be D for cooling. Uh, ALT1 is going to be 8. This is an absolute value high temperature. And the last value is 0 0.2 on alarm hysteria one. So if it goes within that variable that we're gonna now set in the next menu within a 0 0.2 hysteria, then the alarm trips. Alarm type two is, uh, we put this as zero because we don't use it. Okay, let's exit by pressing and holding one. Now let's go into the second menu. Just click button number one, L adjust. So this is auto tune feature off. Um, control shift zero. Now P for your PID control is 223. I is going to be 23. D is going to be 13. And we're back at auto tune. Go back to here. So now I should have it programmed based on that set range of what I previously said 130 to um, 100. But in my instance, I'm doing a test. So I put it down to zero for the low point. So let's see. Put it back to 28. Okay. Push button number two and uh, check that it's in run status so that uh, it does cycle through. And alarm one. So I put it at 175 Celsius. This is a good number. Um, if you're finding that your water jack is starting to get scaled up, you can sometimes raise this number up to about a 200, but I wouldn't go past that variable. There's a high limit safety on the appliance and uh, that is specifically designated to shut the unit off at uh, 300 Celsius. Okay, so I exit that. So, it's at 28 and uh, my set point and I'm just gonna touch the leads here to increase it. 
second. Got my wire. Good. Let's see. So you can see my wire there. So by touching it, it's increasing the temperature. And eventually, you see the output one clicking on and off. So as I mentioned with our electrical, output one is connected to the pulse water solenoid. What happens is, based on a PID function on how this is reacting, it will designate the output one to start giving it controlled bursts of water. If it's cycled up and continues to rise quickly, that output will activate for longer uh, pulse periods. Now, my temperature is increasing because my thumb is quite hot you see that output one is starting to increase because it's not getting a re reaction under the temperature. It will continue to increase the output length just like it is if there's no reaction in that process value. Now if I took my finger off, it's going to drop down and it should correlate with my PID to get a reaction off of that. So the pulses should remain at that pulse length and the temperature should eventually calm down to the um, set value. Um, adjusting your needle valves on the water line will help with this. You should see a temperature increase of maybe one to two points maximum per second. Any more than that, you don't have enough water flow. If you're not able to reach your temperature set value there, that means you have too much water flow. It's quite simple as far as setting up the constant flows for low fire and high fire that you will essentially adjust the rate so that the temperature will allow to climb slowly up to your set point and go past slowly. And then the pulse output will start activating to make sure that it's caught and brought back down to your set value. And that's pretty much it.